So this is an interesting time. Um, we, we just heard from Senator Lankford, the Republican from Oklahoma, about concerns he has during this transition time about security if you don't have the administration cooperating with the incoming Biden administration. And, and I just wonder, because of everything that's happening right now, because of your experience as a Treasury secretary, what you think the risks are just in terms of the financial handoff as well. You know, Becky, I think that the way the outgoing administration is handling the transition is totally irresponsible. Um, it's absolutely clear what the outcome of the election is. And they're just delaying the orderly transition that we know is going to happen. And what does that mean? It means that on the disease front, we now have the good news of a vaccine breakthrough. And that sounds like it's the end of the story if the vaccine works, but it's really only the beginning. The actual operational issues of executing a plan to immunize hundreds of millions of people is an enormous undertaking, especially when the vaccines require special handling. One of them requires being moved in 97 degree below zero conditions and stored. Not even the Mayo Clinic starts out with the capability of doing that. This is an enormous undertaking. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you don't want to lose a day not a day in terms of a smooth transition. And delaying that is fundamentally irresponsible, which is why I think it does put at risk people getting sick and dying. On the national security front, the world doesn't stop, and our adversaries look for weak spots. I think Joe Biden will be one of the most experienced people to take over as president of the United States. He will have an experienced team around him. But as Senator Lankford said, intelligence is not a one-moment uh, event. You pick up points of information, and they come together to form a picture. And the earlier you start, the better your understanding and the clearer your judgment. As the 9-11 Commission reported, delays in transition undermine our national security. I would just take exception with one point that the senator made. This has nothing in common with the 2000 transition. In 2000, there was a difference of under 600 votes, 550-odd votes. It was unclear who the ultimate president-elect would be. This year, it's very clear. And in 2000, if you ask the incoming Bush administration, they got everything they needed and it was done to a T. So I think this administration is setting a new low in terms of how to handle a transition from the point of view of national security. And frankly, it's unpatriotic. It's hard to point to the 9-11 Commission pointing out those flaws in 2011 and the problems that it created, while at the same time saying that this is different. If there's a problem with transition, there's a problem with transition. And I would argue there is a problem with this transition that's taking place. Let's talk a little bit, though, about what Congress has done at this point, which is dealing with a lame duck Congress that has not come up with a stimulus plan and a second stimulus plan. And while we do have these vaccines on the horizon, it could be a very long several months between now and then. There are a lot of American people and a lot of American businesses that are suffering in the meantime. What, what do you think needs to be done on that front? What can be done? Well, absolutely, Becky. It's an immediate crisis, and it shouldn't wait till next year. I think I've said on this show um, that it needed to be done before the election, and that passed. It needs to be done the next time Congress meets. Um, let's just review where we are. Um, yes, there was record growth in the third quarter. But where does it leave us? It leaves us with an economy that's about 3.5% smaller than before the disease hit. It leaves almost 10 million people out of work. It leaves millions of people facing eviction, millions of families without enough money to put food on the table. There's two economies here. The people who are working in the economy that's not back have no more assistance because unemployment benefits are running out. And the extra benefits ran out. Congress needs to act, and they need to act quickly. And to me, the four pillars of what Congress needs to do are, well, five pillars. One is dealing with the health crisis, making sure that all units of government, federal, state, and local, have the resources they need to vaccinate and to do the prevention and public health measures. And then on the economic front, the four issues that I think are just critical, state and local government need the support to continue providing services, families need the benefits that come from unemployment insurance, and people who are facing eviction need to get both eviction protection and support because if we have millions of people, families, homeless, the problem will only get worse. And finally, we need to deal with the nutritional crisis that millions of families are running out of the money to put food on the table. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.